we're going to call the meeting to order at 6.18, I believe, uh, 6.17, August 23rd, 2023. I'm so excited to have everybody here, especially we're going to be doing some interviews today to start our meeting, and it's always exciting. Um, I'm looking forward uh, to, you know, to continue to move forward our system of schools into a unified system. Uh, and to do that, I am looking forward to continue to inspire each other, you know, because it's not just one person, but continue us to inspire each other and trust each other to continue to do what's best for our kids. Uh, and it's a beautiful day outside. So let's make it beautiful in here, however we can, because it was, you know, I'm sure everybody's giving up some personal and family time to be here. So it really, we really appreciate you all being here with us tonight. Uh, I wanted to go over quickly today because we have a potential new board members with us. Just going quickly over our norms uh, and also. Uh, reminding everybody that we, we have public comments, time, we try to restrict it to two minutes. We have public comments at the beginning of the meeting and public comments at the end of, uh, at the, end of the meeting. That's been our procedure and it's worked really well. Um, the, we try to have community involvement, especially when we, have, we know that there's issues that the community wants to participate on and give multiple times for them to give uh, input. Uh, yeah, we do our best to stay on time, and we all, you know, sort of help each other so that that's possible. Uh, we give uh, voice to everybody and take turns for for that. Uh, we have allowed time for reflection at the end of the meeting to see if anybody has any input or what went well or not went well for people at the meeting. Um, in the announcements and reports, uh, we have a really helpful little table that man had added to our agenda and we have as a key so for new board members it just has some key uh, information and description of what you know what sort of what a report is what a committee report is what discussion items are um, and then the role uh, uh, you know I already shared this oh Jonathan is here uh, so it, well, the role of the board is really to set that, that culture that we want to see in our district, to participate in that collaborative culture that we want to see all, all around too, but be respectful. And you know, leadership starts from, from the top, so let's start a meeting. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to, is there any, let me see first, uh, I already sort of think the new board members, future potential board members for being here. Thank you, administrators, for also taking the time to participate in this meeting tonight. And do we have any public comments? In virtual, I don't see any hands up. So welcome, everybody. Uh, uh, can we do a couple of adjustments to the agenda? So one is, well actually it's just really one, can we move uh, the interviews to 3.0 and we'll start the meeting like yeah. that? Yeah. If that's yeah. okay with everybody? Okay. Sure. So seeing all nodding heads, we are gonna, we're gonna start with that. So uh, I thought we would start with Berlin. Is that, is that okay? So Kelly, uh, yeah, you can, you can sit there, you can, come up next to Lisa, but I think that might be better if you stay there. You can stand up however you feel. Because <laughs> I think we can all we can we can all see you from it's me, not do you wanna do you, I, I share the questions with all of the board members. I share the questions with you. It's a, you know, it's don't be intimidated. Nobody here knows at all. It doesn't matter how many times, how many years we've been a board member. We're learning every year, so don't be intimidated by any of us. And there's no no wrong questions and no you know not bad answers. We're here to you know serve our community. So you want to introduce yourself? Self and share with us what motivates you to want to become a school board member. Sure. Yeah, so my name is Keely Sloan. Um, I live in Berlin. I have a four and a half year old and a two year old, both boys. Um, the four and a half year old will be starting his second year at Berlin Elementary this year. So we did pre K there last year. Um, 
and then the two-year-old is home with, with an au pair. Um, and so we live as a family with my husband in Berlin, kind of off of Route 12. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I think I want to be part of the school board. I, I saw that there was an opening and talked to a couple of people about it. Um, and I've really just seen, I've always seen education as kind of the, the great, you know, potential equalizer for families with a diversity of resources and capacities. And so, um, yeah, I, I really like to be a part of the school board just to be part of shaping the, the school district's future to make sure that we can continue to meet, a, you know, the needs of all of our diverse children, their diverse needs of, of all the children in the community. Um, yeah, and I live in Berlin, but we, you know, quickly made friends with people in all of the communities that are within the school district in, in Montpelier, and so I, I am affiliated with the Berlin Elementary right now, but I really, you know, see the school district as one and see this as a service for all the children. Great. Thank you. And then uh, what particular skills or experiences are you hoping to share with us? Um, yeah, so I, I've i always had an interest in education. I studied um, some international education in grad school and worked in international education a little bit. After grad school, I worked for a youth services organization that held a whole host of programs, but um, worked in after school programming and then also job development programming. And I, um, I did their monitoring and evaluation there, and that's what my background is. It's what I still continue to do in part today. Um, and monitoring and evaluation is, is in general, taking a program, understanding how logically it's supposed to work, and then understanding where those points are where you can measure and understand what's working well, what's not working well, and why, both for reporting impact, but also for learning and improving a program. Um, and so I do that, well first I'll say, when I was with the Youth Services Organization, it you know really drove home the impact that access to resources and access to loving adults um, could play in the life of a child or children and teenagers. Um, and yeah, I saw a lot of children's lives really being changed there. Um, so now I work, I've, I work now more in the agricultural sphere, and so I work um, with kind of larger companies to help make their supply chains more sustainable by improving livelihoods of small family farmers, um, generally in coffee and cocoa, so kind of tropical commodity crops. Um, and so with that, I continue to you know, look at programs, help to understand what's working, what's not, understand the challenges that small family farmers are, are facing, and then I also help to set the strategy going forward to make sure that those needs are being addressed and understanding kind of at a systems level across geographies and um, and even crops sometimes how a strategy can be set that is both all encompassing and then can go and be tailored to specific locations or crops or, or um, groups of people. And so I think that that's, you know, especially as we go into strategic planning, I kind of have the the um, practice and experience of looking at something as a whole big picture and then understanding how it will play out in specific instances. Um, so those are kind of my main skills I'm bringing. I'd also say that I'm just a pretty like practical and logical person and that's probably never a bad thing on this so. <laughs> Thank you. And last, because you already shared that you live in the district, are you willing to attend workshops or trainings to learn how to become an effective board member? Yeah, sure. I mean, I have somewhat limited time with small kids and, and full-time job, but definitely I'm you know, lifelong learner and would love to learn more. So. Great. Thank you. Is there any follow-up questions that you guys feel like you should ask? Thank you, Kelly. Okay. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead. My name is Chris. Sure. And, uh, have you served on a board before? I have not served on a board before. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Great. So we're, we're going to interview two East Montpelier candidates, then we're going to go quickly into mini executive session in the next room, and we'll come right back. Okay. So you
welcome to stay with us in, and wait, or I can call you whatever your time frame is. Okay. I don't think you'll be very long. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to stay for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know who wants to go next. Who wants to go first? Mm. Okay. Go, go for it. <laughs> I'm Amelia Mendez Contrada. I'm in East Montpelier. Um, and I grew up in Vermont. I went to school in Vermont and Orange County. And, um, yeah. Do you mind moving to the middle of that thing so that you're not all like yeah. trying to? Yeah, we're like. <laughs> yeah. 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 Does anybody else have the questions in front of them? That will, or do you, what, if, do, do you have them? No. Okay, uh, Chris, do you mind? And then so it's not just. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. This one. Well, Amelia, thank you for coming tonight. <laughs> um, and what motivates you to become a school board member? Um, I have really enjoyed volunteering because um, a lot of my life. And I started it when I was an undergrad um, living in Amherst, and, um, and then I traveled and worked um, helping in grassroots community work uh, through Mexico and Central America, and um, came back and dedicated my time to continue education and my family, and so it, it feels like a good time to kind of reconnect to volunteering and being part of the community and helping out. Um, can you tell us what particular skills or experiences you are hoping to bring to the board and share with us? Yeah, so I think the skills um, and experiences that I have to offer are really rooted in three things about me. So my um, professional life, uh, studying clinical psychology and being a clinical mental health counselor, um, having skills of you know, communication, interpersonal um, communication and mediation and thinking dialectically about sometimes contradicting issues and finding a middle ground um, and um, a volunteering aspect of reaching out to community members and collaborating, strategizing, making plans, executing plans. Um, and then personally, I'm a second generation Brazilian American and so having experience and bringing in that multicultural perspective um, to the community and helping to raise and give um, attention and focus to marginalized groups and focusing on diversity and, and helping out in that area. Um, how long have you been in the district? Three years. It's going on four, actually, 2018. And um, are you willing to attend workshops or trainings on how to become an effective uh, board member? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I'd love to. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll move to SAC. Do you want to do the honors? Or Ursula? Or? I've got mine. Oh, you got them on? Yeah, okay. Mine. I got Hello, Ursula. Um, what motivates you when I become a school board member? So the, the, the schools are sort of one of the one of the one of the really pragmatic but also really powerful ways we can affect the future and improve the future. And I th sort of think is like what I've tried to do with my life. I sort of have a kind of thread of that. Um, I started out actually disaster response work, um, with, mostly with the Red Cross, doing the sort of the you know, you know, placements work after fires. And I sort of, you know, it was a lot of you, bad thing happens, go out and deal with it. Another bad thing happens, go out and deal with it. Always in the same neighborhood because it's the same crappy landlords and crappy wiring. And, um, and I, so I ended up going, I just kind of burnt out on it, ended up going into, um, going back to school for public policy, really to try to start you know, focusing more towards the future. Um, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with that. And I think as I've, you know, since I've had kids, I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old. So Eric is just about to start first grade at EMES. He was in kindergarten last year. And He's older than four, man. What? He, Eric's older than four. Sorry, Vera's four. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, yeah. Eric is six, Vera is four. They would be upset if they knew how to get on to Orca. Um, you know, it's... <laughs> As 
to sort of look and say where I want to push that impulse. Um, it's been, it's made me think much more about sort of looking at, to, to, to want to look at towards the schools. Um, also, my wife is a teacher. She teaches high school at Montpelier High School, and so I'm glad there's a little bit of separation. I'm not, you know, I wouldn't actually be on you know, both on management. The same house would not be on management and you know, you know, the, the workers' side. But I also get get a little bit of that perspective of you know, you know, both from the you know, what's com coming up through elementary school and being very focused on what's the what these schools going to be like when kids come through, but also getting that view of what are things like for older kids right now. Thank you. You touched on this, but what other skills or experiences are you hoping to share with the board and help you serve us? Um, so I, I think a few things. So I've been, I've worked for a, a few different organizations that have been going through some pretty significant changes. So I think particularly as you look at, you know, the configuration, I've been in situations where it's really been handled poorly, where it's handled largely through marketing. And I've been in situations where the organization found real, you know, ways to give people who were, you know, experiencing what they thought of as a loss, something real and sub real and substantive and valuable. So they could say, yes, we actually, I can point to this, and this is a real gain. You know, if I was just talking to a friend who's, you know, it is, in, you know, goes to Doty and saying, oh, I, I would love to have eco. You know, and so they're, they're thinking about things like, oh, what are the things we can add when we think about configuration? I think that that, that impulse is something I would bring. Um, in my work for the hospital system, I've done, I've been the analyst assigned to a lot of their DEI work. And so as we look at quality initiatives, as we look at disparities, and we start to look at some, probably some really small numbers because this district is so white. I sort of bring some of these skills of how do you think about statistical work with really small numbers, and how do you say, you know, how do you sort of say we, you know, you know, you know this is we need to we need to get more data, or we're not going to get more data, and we need to make a decision based on it, you know, even if we're not, you know, if it, if it something isn't statistically significant because we're never going to get to statistical statistical significance, and we can't hide behind that. Thank you. How long have you lived in the district? I've been here. Just over nine years since 2014. And also, are you willing to attend workshops and learn to yes. improve as a board member? Great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, I wonder if we could have a motion to go into executive session. I'll move and that we go into the executive session for the purpose, purpose of deliberating. Of yeah. A second? Second. So, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any of those? I move that we appoint Keely Sloan from Berlin to serve on the school board. And I move that we appoint Amelia Mendez Contrando from East Montpelier to serve on the board. And I move that we appoint Zach Sullivan from East Montpelier to serve on the school board. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Anybody? Thank you. We're excited. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you for your look. <laughs> it's uh, super. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, you were a little later. I just explained it to them. But, yeah, so uh, Eric Anderson, uh, for personal reasons, our work can to resign. You, you don't need to get today. into it. I was just no, confused. No, no, yeah, no, it's okay. It's public. He sent an yeah. email uh, today. So we have two open seats. Yeah. And just a reminder that the appointment is from now until until March. And in March, uh, well, actually, in January 25th, you have to decide if you want to run and give your paperwork. But we will coach you uh, through that. And after the meeting, I'll reach out to you guys via email with more information. Uh, about the board, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. You're welcome to go home because I don't know what your expectation of today was. Like I say in my email, you're happy for you to stay tonight or happy for you to go home, whatever works best. But we'll be seeing you. Our, our next uh, meeting is the third week of September. Is it worth pointing out that you're not yes, actually sir. voting members until you've been sworn in? That's, by that's true. Yes, <laughs> that's true. So if you could, if you could all vote, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll be sending you, that's what I, <laughs> in the, I will send you in the email some instructions. You just have to go to the town clerk and get your oath and then uh, before our next meeting.
so you'll have plenty of time. But I'll send you that information in a written, in a written email, and congratulations. And thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Putting the pressure on you don't get any pressure on your view. Okay. Right. Let's uh, Okay. Megan, do you sure. want me to pass this to you? That and we're good. gonna get into the approaches for the configuration study. Okay. I'm share my screen. Um so I'll just start. Uh, we've talked about th this idea of configuration, restructuring, um, sort of insert word here, uh, a number of times. Um, we, we talked about the um, how does this intersect with our strategic planning. The core question really for this board is how are we best configured in order to achieve what we want for all of our kids. Um, and we know there's a lot of questions around how does how is this related to our strategic planning process. Last year when we kicked off that process, we did that because it was really important to ground this conversation in what is it we want and expect for our kids. Um, so tonight is really about how do we now pick up this study of how we approach that configuration. Um, how do we merge our structure with the vision that we're creating. Um, so. Our goal is we want to connect the work of configuration with strategic planning. Those members of the board that are on the strategic planning steering committee know that it's sort of a question that lots of people have. How are these two things related? Strategic planning isn't the study of configuration, but it's also not distinct from. Um, so the goal is to connect that. Um, I am going to show the board some information about how districts have approached this work um, in Vermont and what, what's involved, what has worked, what are some pitfalls that others have learned. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about community engagement since that's such a critical part of this process. Um, that will be the report part. I'll pause and we'll move on to the rest of the reports. And then during our board operations, we will talk about um, identifying a timeline and study method. Really, the goal is to leave tonight with a picture of how we're approaching the work. So you've seen this visual a lot of times. This is our strategic planning timeline. Um, the reason why now I think is the right time for the board to have this conversation is we are entering a phase where we're solidifying the vision and core beliefs. And the vision and core beliefs is what we want to ground our configuration in. As we study the issue of configuration, we have a pretty good sense of what our communities want at a really high level for our kids. And while we continue to study, we will also be taking those core beliefs and bringing them more specifically into goals and action steps. Um, so this is the, we, I remember talking last year about sort of this process starting with strategic planning and then picking this up and that's sort of where we are now. This is just a visual way of saying, really, we have to, the foundation of this is our vision and core beliefs. What is it we want for the students in our communities? How do we organize ourselves to implement that vision? And then, really importantly, how do we engage the community about what our options are? You've seen this slide lots of times. I won't read it to you, but just a reminder, we do have a district mission. We have a set of priorities that has guided our work for the past number of years, and we'll continue to do that. And so now I'm going to share a lot of information. There will be time at the end to answer questions, but obviously if you're really stuck and, you know, feel free to jump in and ask the question. So a little bit of Vermont learning. Um, spend some time with other systems who have gone through the process of studying configuration and kind of gleaned some themes um, from districts with successful configuration processes. And the way that I've defined success is not that they achieved any one end, it's that the board landed with a decision that they were unanimously comfortable with. Some of those people determined not to reconfigure, some did at various different scales. So the, a success isn't that they changed, a success is that they landed somewhere they were comfortable with. Um, so things that they all unanimously agreed 
is that board-led processes have the most success um, because you are the representatives of the community and, and your voice is what uh, takes the voice of the community and lands it. Um, the process needed clear goals, really clear data, transparency, and a really concrete timeline. This is not new to folks because you all have talked about this before, but I do think it's reinforcing. Um, schools talked a lot about having really strong support from administration, but that the work is really led by the board. So there's a lot of information that this our, our leadership team and others in the organization will need to give you, um, but it's really a collaboration. Um, and it's, you know, your, your job is to give us direction about where we should be, so. Um, <laughs> cannot say enough. The districts that did not feel like they had a successful process, it, it's <laughs> when they didn't have good community engagement. I mean, that's obvious, but um, seems obvious, but that's really clear engagement with the community is helpful. This is something that is actually on both lists. Uh, some really felt it was important to have consultants <coughs> as neutral facilitators. Um, I'll talk about that on the other end in a second. Some of the things that were challenges, communication and engagement, so being really clear. Um, if the process was unclear or if the board seemed disconnected from the process. Um, you know, there are some districts that, that really the administration came forward with a recommendation and um, that was more challenging. And then on the pitfall side, some communities really didn't want consultants. They really felt like it should be driven by someone within the community. So that's something that kind of lands on both sides. Um, when we talked about this at the Finance Committee, um, we thought it made sense to actually have a, a real example, like a case study. So um, can I, I'll read it, actually. I'm not going to ask you if everyone can see that. So I'm just going to read this. It's a little bit of a summary. Um, Megan, do you, know which, do you not want to name which? I don't, only because they did. I'll say it's in the Northeast Kingdom. Okay, thank you. They did not, I didn't ask them if I could. Of course, okay. this is all public. Thank they you. could probably find it, but. Um, <coughs> Yeah, good question. I should have thought about that before. But so in the Northeast Kingdom, rural, I tried to, I tried to, of the stories that I was hearing, I tried to pick one that had some parallels to us, although there's some differences here. So a rural, multi town, unified union school district studied the configuration of their smallest elementary schools. They charged a subcommittee, strongly supported by the superintendent and administration, to study the current realities of their system for them. Um, Things relative to their situation were aging infrastructure, declining enrollment, and concerns about quality of services available to students in the smallest schools. The board leaned heavily on the administration to identify the data and study the configurations, but broadly owned the decision. The result for this board was a reconfiguration, so moving students around. They, they moved middle school students to a single building, and one of their smallest elementary schools became a, a pre-K. Um, two years in, the community is largely positive about the change. Now, obviously, I'm sure there are some in the community that aren't. I don't mean to paint that overly rosy, but that's the perspective of them. So they felt the, the key takeaways for them is that it was a really collaborative process, and what won the board over to make the decision was the amount of research and study behind it. So been using the word study a lot um, because that is what I think this board needs to do is study this issue and I don't necessarily mean produce a written report although you could have it in a rep in a report but really what's all the information you need to know these were some components of the studies that other districts have done that it's really grounded in your either your mission or vision for us it's our vision and core beliefs it really has to include an in-depth analysis of the system so your enrollment, historic, current, projected. Um, it was really important that people cite the source, um, which I think is relevant for us. We've heard some comments from people about, is our enrollment really declining? And where, where did that information come from? I think we have to be really clear about where it comes from. Um, an analysis of the quality of student experience was really important. So. Yes, that involves outcomes, meaning student performance, but it's also what do kids have access to across the system. We've talked about world language in our system. We've talked about access to counseling and nursing arts. But it also involves class size. Um, 
And then, in addition to the quality of student experiences, what are the costs to provide those at different scales so that that all is part of what you would then look at? There needs to be a facilities analysis. Thankfully, we have a really good comprehensive facilities plan. We have a lot of this information at our fingertips. Um, and then a cost analysis. What's the per pupil cost in each one of the, the configurations that are, struck, that are um, being studied, including the current one? I, sh I should have actually said that. <laughs> one of the things that was really important is when you're studying the configuration, you also study what exists currently so that you have that to compare. Um, I should also just add, we have a lot of this data. So when we get to a conversation about timeline, um, obviously there's a lot of pulling together, there's a lot of filling in some holes, but largely we have this data, you've seen a lot of this data as part of the budget process. So then the study really studies really had what are the different configuration options, what's the pro-con analysis, and that includes quality of student experience, it includes kind of all those elements, and then what's the revised costs associated with each model. And then the study should also specifically outline how you will communicate and engage with the community around it. So those are study and elements. I may have to skip some slides. Oh, no. Yeah. So here's the different ways that districts have chosen to um, study, to do the study. So we just talked about the content of the study. Really what you're going to talk about later is how you will address that. Um, one of the ways that m a number of districts chose to do this was to charge a committee of the board. Some of them charged an existing committee, some of them created a standalone committee to conduct the study. Um, those subcommittees had non-board members on it, particularly heavy, heavy involvement of the superintendent and administration. Um, but there may be others as well. The board could choose to have community members outside of the board be part of that. So you would charge a committee. That committee really needs a clear charge and timeline. You're going to hear that often. And then really active board participation. This, is, this committee in particular has a lot of work behind it, right, to be able to do that. Um, some districts, and I put this on here in interest of full disclosure, um, but some districts did choose to charge administration to bring back a recommendation. And I can tell you right now that's not my first recommendation to you, um, but it is something that others have done. And some districts chose to sort of um, contract out for the entire study. So in this in, in this example, the consultant is not just a facilitator. This would be someone to do the study. So that is something that other districts have done. Um, there may be other things. There may be, I think when the board comes back to think about this, you may have other ideas about how to approach this work. But those top three are, um, are what other districts in Vermont have done. And then just a little bit about community engagement. Um, we're learning a lot about this from the strategic planning process. We're <laughs> learning what works, and we're also learning how hard this is. This is, that's not a news flash to this board either. Community engagement is hard, um, and it's especially hard when what you're engaging on is really abstract. So hopes and dreams, and you know, what do we want for our kids? That feels like something really easy to engage with, but it's actually kind of hard. We also know that people come out when something is important to them. We've had our most attendance in this, since I've been here, is when we were talking about mascots, when we were having <laughs> difficult budget discussions. And configuration will be one of these. <laughs> we will have lots of engagement. Um, the other thing we know is the board has to be able to engage the community and still preserve your ability to make a decision based on all of the information of which community opinion is one piece. So one thing for you to consider, especially knowing that one of our agenda items tonight is to affirm the work plan, is there some board learning or other work that the board needs to do in order to um, expand on this community engagement? Um, frankly, knowing we were doing this work is part of why we asked Great Schools Partnership to come to the retreat to sort of lay some baseline information around community engagement. But you may want to think about some other things. 
So that's the report part. I'm happy to answer questions, um, clarifying or otherwise, that you might need. Um, in terms of a um, community or facilitator, you said some communities didn't want outside consultants. Um, how about uh, using community facilitators, folks who have been moderators? I, I know we have a handful across the district who, is yeah. that still a helpful role? I think at least one, at least actually two districts, uh, one did add their town moderator, a town moderator, it was a big district, um, because the person was just facilitating. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, I do think that's an option. I think the board would decide what is it we want the consultant to do. If they're there to help facilitate, that's a certain mm -hmm. skill set. If they're there to do Work. facilitation and any part of the study, then you want to look for someone with that skill set. Um, with your Vermont example, how long did their study take? What, how, how, Good what was question. The <laughs> Two years. Two years. Two years mm -hmm. for that for that district. And did, oh, like the process of reconfiguration was two years, or the study itself was two. The years? The study and decision, <coughs> and then after that two years is when then then they. So that's a great question because there's three things involved. There's the study, there's the decision making, and then there's the implementation. And in that district, it was two years for the study and the decision. And then they kicked off the implementation process. Okay. Now, I did not ask um, exactly how long the implementation was. I don't know if that was the third year. Um, so mm -hmm. that, that I can follow up with. But I think, well, I think this first step is study and decision. It's that timeline. Because honestly, the implementation depends on what you choose. Mm -hmm. If it's a big reconfiguration, then it might include lots of things. Um, if it's a smaller scale configuration, so. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, maybe, maybe we don't have this information. To the extent that the configuration study committees uh, had outside membership, like I'm thinking beyond central office staff, mm -hmm. uh, were there examples of participants and was there any correlation with like successful configuration studies versus unsuccessful, depending on who they included? Good question. Um, none of the superintendents, but this does not mean the groups didn't have that, none of the superintendents mentioned committee members aside from board and administration. Um, a couple of them did get into some detail about um, school community members were part of the engagement process. Um, so that when they were saying, here are a couple of options, that part was deeply involved or deeply involved engagement, but I don't believe on the study committee itself. So. And as a board, we're gonna have a chance to discuss through board mm -hmm. operations. We will get right into, right now, it was meant to be more of a, of a report, and then we would have those conversations, and there's some questions that you kind of saw in the, in the, in the packet. We will dig into those well when we get into our actions. Is that? Any other questions? Just on the report. Um, yeah. In the um, Vermont example study, um, you noted that a it was a collaborative process. Mm -hmm. Collaborative amongst what entities? Um, sh uh, just now I've narrowed the field. I just <laughs> alluded that the superintendent is a she. Um, she said that uh, in her mind it was board administration and the communities. Okay. That the, if the communities themselves didn't support this idea, she doesn't think it would have gone anywhere. Yeah. Okay. If there is any, if there's no other questions, we'll move into our next uh, central office team cult yep. report. Um, and uh, so that's you me again, again given yes. the time of year. Yes. Um, so uh, I would just highlight the substance of the cult report really is a strategic planning update. Um, you'll see in there we are in phase two, which is really looking at we have a draft vision and core beliefs. We want to see if we got it right, so we are doing some more engagement. I would highlight it's a different type of engagement. Um, it's really meant to be much more targeted. Um, we're looking at focus groups, um, 
And so the steering committee, strategic planning steering committee, is in the process of defining the questions that will be asked, who we might bring in, how we're going to recruit them, things like that. The other thing that I would say along with kind of a plea is we pushed out our first thought exchange, um, which is another way to get input on the draft. Um, I'm excited to see. I checked today. We have quite a bit of engagement with the platform. Uh, so to the extent that you are able to push out those links, um, that I even put a QR code in there. If that's helpful, it might not be. Um, to your own social media or just pushing it out that way, that would be great. The more engagement we have with the platform, the better. And yeah. So when I went to the link, the vision and core beliefs weren't available, just the question set. Which and link? The, the link that says, please share widely. Well, well, there's two links. Both. One is the uh, hub um, and one is the. Um, yeah, I opened both right and the, they worked. They worked, <clears throat> yours worked. It took worked. me right yeah. to the thought exchange because yep. I wanted to try it before we came in. And But the actual vision and core beliefs were not there to reference to then answer the question. Well, let's look at it together because yeah. they are there when okay. I check the links. It's the okay. first thing that I see. Yeah, because the, oh, you have the same experience? I have the same experience. Okay. Oh, oh, because they... I'm on good. the phone, so yeah, okay. I could yeah, and I would It shouldn't be. It's supposed it to be optimized to, to a phone. I, mean, I wanted to carry out the distribute but I wanted to see first, and I, uh, it wasn't user yeah. friendly for me. Yeah, yeah, we can look at it together. Yeah, I double checked it on on Facebook too, because it was posted on Facebook, and the links work there. So I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I have not we'll, had that experience. Yeah. So we'll okay. we'll take we'll a look. Take a look. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, or you know, directions on how to find the actual draft to then answer the questions mm -hmm. would have been helpful. Maggie, I'm seeing the the vision and core beliefs document right in the introduction. This is the this yeah, is I landed in the I same place. I just did the QR code. The, and if you just scroll line. right down, it's yeah, it's right, right, there. right there. Okay. So you can log in, but you have to scroll down to then see it. Well, so there's a button that says "Get Started" and then a button that says "Next," and then yeah. it's right there. Okay. Any other any highlights? Any questions, any questions around the yeah. okay. court report? I the phone that I didn't see those when I because I went through several steps. Any questions on the call report from board members? No? Okay, let's move right along. Thank you. It was very yeah. thorough. So thank you for both the presentation and the call report. Uh, moving into the Central Vermont Career uh, Career Center, just that you know we're getting ready to go back to school too at the Career Center. Uh, one highlight that I wanted to share the, is um, is that Jody just came back from uh, with Christina Courier, who's the cosmetology person. She's great uh, to a, a lot of our you know actually three of our students are working with her up at Berlin. If you guys want to get your hair done, there's three of our students working up there at Martha's. M and H, you know, check uh, check them out. They're they're really great. I just got my hair done by them, so <laughs> it's been okay. But uh, they uh, so they went to Orlando, Florida, to a conference. And the highlight that I wanted to share that was really exciting from from Jody was like she got the perspective from other. It was a conference for just technical and career centers, and they were talking a lot about how they engage uh, starting in first grade, not necessarily going to the technical center, but starting to have those conversations. And then again in sixth and seventh grade, having the opportunity to actually tour the, the so starting at, at a little bit earlier. So I just thought we, we were excited about that. We just had our first meeting last week. And we, as our board, starting the budget, uh, the budget process and looking at our uh, review of policies, which is the thing that we had. We, we had just adopted the policies from uh, Barry last year and just like because there was too much to do otherwise and this year you know we're going through a policy review for the first time for the district which is also exciting any questions on the career center no and we got our perkins grant authorized which allows us to keep our design and fabrication program going to which is super exciting uh, on other committee uh, committee reports we don't have any other committee reports today because quality hasn't, hasn't met. I do have, uh, a, and I didn't put it here, just a, a VSBA a quick a question. We, when we had our retreat, we talked about, I haven't heard from anybody else, but 
Ursula yet on who wants to go to the conference. Uh, so it's uh, October 26th and 27th. You could attend just Thursday if you want, or you can attend uh, both Thursday and Friday. So you know, let us know. We're hoping to have more people join us, uh, new board members. You are welcome to, and that's the annual conference, uh, and it takes place in Lake Maury, so it is a drive. But and you can attend just Thursday, or you can attend both Thursday and Friday. But if you know boards from across the state okay, come together, okay. Moving right along into the finance committee report. Yeah. So because we're a little tight on time, everybody had the financial report on their packet. So I'm just going to ask, are there any questions on the financial report? The finance committee met yesterday, <laughs> so we're fresh. Uh, any? Yeah, pretty exciting. Yeah, pretty exciting. The parking lot looks amazing. Yeah, yeah we're gonna get it. We're, we're gonna get into that. Just don't <laughs> don't get into the projects yet. But if I, if, if, sorry. If not, no, that's okay. Yeah. Me too. I guess. Yeah. So so all the savings on expenses is yes. that due to our staffing situation? Primarily. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you want to share a little bit on that, Suzanne, on yeah, our budget balance? Yeah, regular instruction in special education, again, it's super similar to last year's report where those are uh, significantly under budget and it's related to uh, not being able to fill positions and so getting creative about how we provide services to students. Um, and creativity is wonderful and great, but it uh, isn't what we had planned and so it's not necessarily the best thing that we wanted in that moment. Um, just means that our administrators are, are very good at thinking creatively. So, mm -hmm. so Megan, is mm -hmm. there any sense that um, because of the vacancies and lack of staff that our students are suffering academically or in, in achievement ways? It's a great question. I feel confident that the amount of creativity that Suzanne is referencing is meaning that what we've prioritized with the vacancies is student instruction. Okay. What we are recognizing, um, and in fact the board may hear about this at, at a September meeting, is the um, creativity to prioritize instruction is causing some challenges on case management and kind of paperwork and, and we may need some relief around that area. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to pretend that there are no impacts because if I if there were no impacts, then it might say, mean we don't need that those staff, and that's not at all what we're saying. Um, but I do feel good and about that's, my, that's reason I'm asking. Yeah, I no, I feel good about the yeah. creativity, and yeah. it's not sustainable for a very long time. Yeah. And, there, and Stephen, I don't feel you know put off that I didn't ask you that question, no. but I was looking at the bird's eye view <laughs> from the superintendent yeah, rather than Stephen. Can you tell me or? or <laughs> Because you were you were following Gillian, you, Gillian. you were Sorry. following your roles and responsibilities, and you were asking the superintendent for because you've been working so you know, hard let, in let me start governance. Over then. Great, great, Chris. You're I'm awesome. perfectly comfortable if you ask Stephen that question also. I'm, I'm, I'll refer to the superintendent. <laughs> Sounds like you, you can get an idea of that. Okay, okay. thank you. Yes, of course. So, so just one observation that this is probably not a big insight, but. Um, Given that the staffing is not a uh, one, it's not a temporary situation. This is the new normal. It seems that um, that becomes a driver in our configuration study. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do we optimize the yes. labor that's available? Yes, to us? exactly. Because that helps make it more manageable, so we keep the people we have and yeah. get the best outcomes. Exactly. Possible. Yep. Any. Any other questions on that? Otherwise, I was going to move into the capital improvement. And seeing that Chris is here, we get to congratulate him and Bill and everybody and Suzanne, too, and the amazing work at you know the parking lot looks like night and day. And it's not just the parking lot. We had all those great pictures in our report from all of our schools. And it, so Chris, do you want to highlight a couple of things? Yeah, sure. I mean, very proud actually, of? We actually had three fairly big projects, the parking lot being one the energy recovery units on the roof here, being two, and then the boiler project up to uh, Callis. Um, everything is, at this point, on time, on budget, and, um, you know, we're hoping that the project will be done here by the end of next week, if, you know, weather permitting. They're, they're contracted to have it done by the 15th, but, you know, 
the amount of work that that crew has put in, J.A. McDonald and IMS, that did all the concrete work, with the weather that we've had this summer, and, uh, and throw a flood in the mix, and it's uh, it's pretty amazing that we are where we are. Um, so it looks really good, and um, hopefully uh, we get it finished up by the end of next week. But everything's everything's on time and on budget. You know, and on budget. So it's been a crazy summer, but we're getting to the end of it. So. And I figured we'd throw some pictures in to kind of show like the parking lot wasn't just a repave. There's a lot of excavation and you know stormwater structures and piping and and, and sub base material. And so it was uh, kind of it shows shows the whole picture. So, so is, it, is this from a helicopter or the crane? That's the crane. <laughs> I was on the roof when I took that. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, maybe is this a helicopter? Or a crane? I'd be really impressed. You were good modeling for your new board members. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to call it future proofing. Those, the extra, um, the extra car charger stations to the grants. Yeah, there's some. Yeah, so, yeah. so we don't have the chargers, but we have the conduit have, yeah. and the infrastructure, so we don't have to dig right. back up right. the. Uh, yeah, the parking lot. That's yeah. really cool. And we are chasing down because there is some, we sort of found there are some new funding opportunities right. that can perhaps fund up to 95% of that potential project, which would be a really good thing to take advantage of. So we've, we're sort of in the process of investigating what that, what does that actually mean? Is that just a sound bite or is that real? Yeah. So. Yep. On that same note, there was some really fantastic planning uh, while we implemented all of the projects that were similar to that. Um, with that conduit, yeah. we're also going, we planned ahead for cameras that we want to install mm -hmm. in the parking lot. So cool. each of the projects, I think one thing Bill and uh, Chris are really good at is thinking ahead. Like how, not just in this moment, what should this look like, but how is it going to impact us? A few years down the road, five, ten years down the road. So, cool. Okay, thank you, everybody. And please thank Bill and the crew. Yeah. Now let's move. I'm looking for a motion to approve the EMES walking refrigerator freezer. Quick, quick question first yes. about um, the Doty generator project. Oh, Are sure. we looking into possibly getting FEMA funding? For that at all. I know there had been talk about, <laughs> I'm just looking at you, Gillian. I'm not expecting you to answer the question. <laughs> there had been talk about maybe getting it as the shelter, because Worcester doesn't have an emergency shelter, and maybe pairing with getting some funding from FEMA for a Yeah, th th It's one of our priorities. Yeah. Yep. So. So, so the town has um, is going to do that type of uh, grant application, right. and they're going to give us money towards the generator. Or that's what the discussions are. I shouldn't make promises out loud from them, but that's the discussions right now. We've put, you all have approved mm -hmm. 95 in your capital budget, and so Chris and Bill are doing the planning uh, and meeting with engineers to do an RFP, scope budget, all of that for the project. And then t future discussions are coming with the town, and they're going to do that application, is what they've indicated. And yes, they've also indicated that they would like that as a, an emergency management site. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now I'm looking for a motion to approve the MES walking refrigerator freezer. I move that the board approve the use of the food service fund balance to pay for a new walk-in refrigerator freezer and the installation of the equipment for an amount not to exceed $31,264. Thank you, Ursula. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you, Jonas. Discussion. Are there any questions? I, I do. Go, we'll go ahead, Dan. Dan. Um, yeah, so I was just reading it. So, and I apologize that I missed the finance committee meeting yesterday. Um, so there was a plan to use $262,500 of the fund balance for new equipment, was that assuming the $5,000 cost for the fridge? Yes. And it's now gone up, so we're going to use more of it than anticipated. If you approve this, yes. If we approve it. Yep. And who is Todd Hill? Todd Hill he is, is our custodian. He is the lead maintenance uh, gentleman at East Montpelier Elementary School. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and he's fantastic. He's been there for a really, really long, not well, he's been there 10, 
15 years, almost. Um, how, the food balance for food service That's seems okay. very high to me. Um, how, how is it getting that high? I would say that the, the federal reimbursement rates and the universal meals for the state mm -hmm. have uh, contributed to that. Is it, it, would it be fair to say that we budgeted not anticipating that there would be universal meals? Yes. And, and because it yeah. would be silly not to. Yeah, but so part of that is the transfer that the board right. sends in, but um, I don't know if you all remember, but a couple of years ago we actually had to cut that because we were putting too much in because the state said you can't have too much in there. Mm -hmm. So we've actually cut back on what you transfer from the general budget into it. Um, just, I think we've got good cost control measures in place so our costs stay at a reasonable place mm -hmm. and then we get our reimbursements from the federal and the, the state government, so. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Seeing none, the motion carries. Um, and then let's move right back. So let's move into into policy today. The policy committee didn't uh, didn't had a meeting yet, but we wanted to uh, reaffirm the adoption of the policy F three and F four. We did it at our last meeting, but if you remember, uh, the our lawyer recommended that we reaffirm them because we hadn't warned them for the ten days. So if I could have a motion to for the second reading and adopting. Policy F3 and F4. So moved. Thank you. A second? Second. Thank you, Ursula. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? The motion carries. Thank you, everybody. All right. Now moving to the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> the discussion. So this is the board operation part. It, do you, does anybody need three minutes to use the bathroom or we just carry through and maybe we can get done a little early today? So timing and approach for the configuration study. I'm happy to overview this, but finance committee members, please weigh in. Um, finance committee has had a little bit of a conversation and is offering um, a possible timeline, um, starting with that part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. So the what that recommendation is, is that September to December would be the um, doing of the study, the conducting of it, the pulling all the information together. Again, as I said earlier, largely we have this information. This is not, um, so yes, there's some work involved. I don't want to pretend there isn't, but we have it. Um, that in the middle of that time span that our presentations would include a status report to the extent that it informs budget discussions. The reality is we won't know the answer to this in time for this budget, but to the extent that we can have a status report and, and understand at least a little bit how it informs budget discussions, that we would present, the study group would present in December to the board January and February would be the board's opportunity to react, discuss, engage among itself. You know, what did, what did the study miss? Is there information that needs to be added? And sort of make sure that it's ready. March to May would be community engagement and action in June. Um, and I would say that this timeline, you know, you all had a conversation at the board retreat and you sort of acknowledge that this is the bulk of the work for this year. So this timeline fits into your board work plan and gives you adequate time as a full board to engage in this, so. Yeah, and it was in, if you guys had a chance to review your work plan, it was infused mm -hmm. in the work plan. Originally we had it in green and now it was just like blocked uh, there. And there's some spaces there that were blank in anticipation that we might have a little more work and gives us flexibility to, to have more meetings if, if needed. Yeah. And just to add to this, the Finance Committee also agreed to have two meetings a month mm -hmm. instead, of just, uh, instead of just one. So, yeah. so is the Finance Committee volunteering? So that was one of the conversations that, that was one of the conversations we have. We have the, do you want to go to the next That's slide? The next sure. <laughs> <laughs> before, before you do, um, yeah. 
It, it seems to me that that timeline yeah. um, does not put community engagement in the in the mix between September and December, uh, which I think it, it really should be, um, rather than just present something to the community and then say we're going to engage you now, uh, when when between March and May, unless we're just developing options, uh, where which would be then um, responsive to community engagement because yes. if it's not that then I think we run into a, a difficulty. Offering this as a clarifying okay. answer to that question, the September to December would be the study, the pulling the data, the um, gathering of the various different possible configurations. The engagement would be on multiple. It's input opportunities on time? actual options. During the September to December time? I think that would be part of but, the planning of the study, yeah. too. Okay. Like, what level of engagement needs to be had to generate the options, okay. then study the options. Okay. And March to May is is engaging on options. And the foundation of this is the strategic plan. Exactly. Right. Yes. So the engagement we're asking the community to focus on between now and, and uh, September, whatever, uh, February, January, is, is around the plan. I think this is about developing, developing options that we then turn around and say, okay, we have this plan, here's some options, what do you think? So, but this reconfiguration part has very direct impact on certain, potentially very direct impact on certain communities uh, who should be engaged early on. Yeah. Um, and I, particularly since our articles of agreement give communities that may be impacted depending upon the definition of what we're doing, a veto. I, yeah. I, I get that. Right, but I, I think, I think that, that is going to be information that shot comes to us in the study. Right, we're going to get, right now there's a study, like you're going to go out and gather data, which is not necessarily community input, it's data, like actual hard facts. What mm -hmm. are our student enrollment? Community input isn't going to be helpful there. So, can, can I just clarify one thing that yeah, I think sure. might be helpful? It's like if we go even back to that slide that Megan showed. So what we're trying to do right now is get that foundation, like she said. So if we get the foundation of the core beliefs, in the meantime, we're gonna be, all this information is there sort of scattered right now in different places. We have looked at it at different points in our budgeting season and it's budgeting part. We, it allows us to preserve the integrity of the strategic planning. And then just think about that, don't, worry about the but you know like the but the finance committee is going to have to be integrating the information that they're getting for the next budget but this is not something that we're going to automatically have done by next march right this is a systems approach to to becoming sort of more unified so it'll be multi-year it's not going to be like you know by next March, we're going to close a school or something like that, right? It's no, well, like we, it's the, so it's not like magically by, you know, March or or May, we are going to, the action doesn't come, as you see there, until until June, and it's on the options that we'll have, mm -hmm. and those options might be a multi-year approach. It doesn't mean that it's all just going to hap happen right away, right? Well, maybe it not happen right away, but if you're <laughs> developing options for an action to be taken, um, getting the community input at that point, you're developing the options, um, is helpful because you will find out what's palatable and what is not palatable. C correct, and then we, but we will be doing that through January and uh, and and February with the community. There will also be lots of budget conversations. There'll be and lots of engagement there that I'm sure will involve this as well. And like yeah. Kari said, I mean, during the strategic plan, we will just have completed. In this September, in September, we will have completed phase two of the strategic planning, which gathered um, core, beliefs. Com core beliefs and from our community and what they care for, what what is important to them. And so then we can take some of that information and other things that Florida has said uh, that we'll gather along the way. I don't think we're 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 not not getting community input, right? We've we've been gathering it and what our uh, yeah, because I just thought, I, I think just, I mean, more broadly, I think it's important to engage and encourage engagement from the community at every possible level of this process. That's what I think. Every possible level mm -hmm. of the process. In part of what we heard as part of the presentation is that community turnout, it sounds like for the strategic planning has not been great because it hasn't involved a mascot or a budget cut. And am, am, am I 
incorrect on that. Mm -hmm. Megan? No, you're right. No, okay, yeah. so, you know, having something like reconfiguring a school where your kids are going to be, whatever it means, that's when the community wants, will come out. Mm -hmm. And having that upfront and early, I think we'll get better feedback from the community rather than saying, we had our strategic planning, not many people showed up, but this is what we think you said, and building, using that as the, the basis for our options, I think is a mistake. Chris, can I ask? Wait, wait, wait one sec, uh, Daniel. I was just gonna say, I mean, I think prior to the presentation in December, um, we're not really even, as a board, gonna be having internal dialogue about it. We're coalescing, coalescing around a few scenarios, and the, the generally understood advantages and disadvantages of each, as I understand it, and then, beginning in January and February, we're going to be deliberating in open session. I think For community session. engagement is unavoidable at that point. So maybe it's it's incorrect to just call March to May community engagement, but maybe that's a, a different phase of community engagement where it's more intentional outreach, but people are going to come to us with reactions as soon as that presentation in December is sort of what I anticipate, and I'm looking forward to that. And during the, I'm sorry. Okay, so Ursula. I was just curious, Chris, what community input are you looking for that would impact or add to the study information? Uh, well, since we don't, you, you know, we're not, Oz, and we're not the all-powerful Oz, um, we would hear from community members if they see a configuration and go, that just doesn't work for me because this, that, or the other thing. What um, but configuration then, would they be who, know, who knows? Because we don't have any models on, on the That's board, right? That's why we right? have to do the so models. How so, are we going to create those models? Um, by... That's a good question, Ursula. I was so would we I'll maybe give you need that. to gather data about our buildings and our enrollment yeah. and future enrollment and so, budget impacts, equity, student, social, emotional learning impacts, and the potential options would come from that information? The, yes, but, okay. but you don't you want to have community input on what those potential options are going to be, what's really important to a community. And plus, okay. plus putting so, it, let me finish, um, putting it out there, this may involve a closure, or this may involve moving um, students from the fifth grade, from the sixth grade over to U32 and create a sixth grade up here. Things like that that... So in September, are, like maybe next yeah. month, you would like to go to the community and say, we're going to look at configuration. We don't have any options for you. No. Nope. It could include in December, any it number like of these wild options. suppositions. <laughs> we have no data. Please give us your input. No, if, if, if we're having options in December, we should put them out there in December. And so wait, wait, let me finish, engage the community, rather than what this is saying is you're engaging the community between March and May. So okay. uh, just to, I think we're, we're, I think we're talking similar, so just to try to, like, it's just we're going at it from different points of view. So what the conduct the study gathers the data that, you know, some are talking about. So it's just gathering the data and the information that, that we need. At the same time, in November, where we're doing that budget presentation, we're going to be sort of reporting back on how that is going for the budget discussion. You know, with the data that we're, it's going to be helpful for our budget discussion. And then once we have that, we're, they, you know, they're able to generate some options because what we do know is that our communities are better at, you know, sort of reacting that back and forth with us. So even if we put out the pros and cons of possible pilot, I'm like, just like, just think about the budget process last year. Let's say a pilot project that we were thinking about it, we would be able to hear back and forth, you know, oh, the, yes, no, you know, whatever. These are the questions, these are the pros and cons, this is what it's going to cost. So we would be better informed as a board to be able to have a conversation with the community then as opposed to just like, you know, have some speculation of, you know, the options will be based on that core strategic plan. Yeah, I don't know how else to, but let's, because I think what will help is if we move into the next, you know, besides the, the, the timeline, which anything that, including the work plan that we have here is, is that working document, right? So it's, even though it looks linear, it's not linear. We're like always going around asking questions are we doing what we need to do? Are we engaging what we need to do? If we need to inform it differently, and if some dates need to change, some dates needs to change, right? But right now, to be able to 
work with our administrators and be realistic about when we could have the study put together. The December timeline felt like it would be fit really good into our work plan after we had our retreat the other day, and it would be give time enough for administrators to gather the information that is scattered for a better word. You know, it's not scattered, so you know, we kind of all, all know it. Uh, I had a question on, does that timeline feel okay to administration? Like, do you guys think that it's doable? I don't. Yes, because the information really is at our fingertips at, in various presentations. Um, we have learned even just from engagement planning that people have a couple questions they would like to add to it. That's why I gave that example of where did we get our enrollment data. So other than adding things like that, um, I do think it's reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask another? I don't know if it's related to where we are right now, but it's a thing yeah, that so Do what? Okay. I, it's based on information to include in the study. A bunch oh, of sure, sure. If it's on information to include in the study. Yeah. 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 Um, we listed a lot of things. Um, equity effects were not listed. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to know those. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Russell. Can I just make, um, yeah. I, I think I share some of Chris's concerns it's, um, in terms of if, if you were going to design it in the ideal state, you'd probably give yourself more time and have some input at an earlier phase. I think, um, and it also seems like a very big lift for us and for you, um, but um, it's designed to get us to a place by next summer that we can start to um, prepare for the next budget cycle. Mm -hmm. I think that's, to me, yes. a, a key yes. consideration. If we wait to start the study until after the strategic planning, we'll miss another year. And we're already committed to getting as much community engagement. I don't know, I don't think we've emphasized that enough with the board. Yeah. We want the strategic it's planning, planning, we want all hands on deck to get community input into these next three phases and to and to ask people to also participate in configuration study input at the same time and budgeting process that's i think that's too much so we have to sort of decide do we want to sequence this in this in this way i'm, I'm comfortable with it myself but thank you carrie let's look at this for a yeah. minute if so that I don't know if it will help clarify and we can go back into the timeline. Is that okay with this? No, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Do you want me to summarize? Sure. sure. Um, so, and you probably, there were, I probably hinted at this several times in the presentation. I think the recommendation of the Finance Committee is that there be a committee charged, a smaller committee charged to conduct the study just from a management of uh, 15 people versus a smaller group who can really go in depth. Um, the board would want to talk about, is that an existing committee? Is that the finance committee? Is it the steering committee? Is it a different committee altogether? Um, we've already talked about the administrative involvement. Um, it's come up here. Is there other involvement? I think that's worth you talking about. Um, but that committee's job is the work around the study. Everything then gets presented to the board. And any discussion, decision making, and engagement planning is done by the full board. So I think it's an open, if the study committee says we need more time to study or we need more engagement on the first draft of options, all, all, any and all of those things can happen and would all be done as part of the full board. Um, and then I think it is a worthwhile question for the board around this consultant slash facilitator piece and would that be helpful to the board? So a couple of uh, sort of to, to add to what Megan said from our finance meeting, the, the the finance committee felt like you know if the if the finance committee was was charged with it, they were already meeting twice uh, twice a month to just keep it going. It directly affects the the budget in in the future, and the finance committee meetings are open to 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 everybody. And that, like Megan said, is just the study part, right? It's not the deciding completely on, on configuration. Yeah. It's just the study part. And then the second uh, uh, the second part of that is that the steering committee is already sort of charged with the um, uh, superintendent evaluation, right? So they already, and they, you know, there's already a job and that's one of the most important jobs that, that we have. So just to put, highlight that when we're making that 
uh, that decision, and I had another thing, and I can oh, the facili the facilitator, another another thought to consider between a uh, outside facilitator and and in-house facilitator, or re we're already working right now with the Great Schools Partnership, and we have a facilitator that is informed in where the strategic plan and the core belief, so that's another, just wanted to throw that there too. There's, there's another possibility for facilitation, right? Not, not a person deciding on what, on what we're doing that will be informed of what the, you know, the core beliefs, sort of that foundation to help us keep those, you know, what I call it is like when you're bowling and you just have the, in your lines, the, guards, the, the guards up, so not necessarily controlling, but just not letting us go in the... In the guards. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, questions. Uh, I'm gonna, the, you, I know you had your hand up, but I'm gonna yeah. let Maggie go first, because she has to know. Uh, how long out from now do we need to make a decision on the consultant slash facilitator? I think the trick is to try to, they, they book pretty quickly, so at least, you know, sort of save time or give indication to a couple of people that we will be wanting a facilitator, they've, you know, so I, I would say this <clears throat> sooner or better. on our consolidation meetings, I personally feel like it's critical that it's a community member and not someone from a paid private organization outside the community, despite all of the... Okay. knowledge that person has about their strategic plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be my Yeah, vote. and that's important. Um, but, yeah. Because I think it's going to be, that there, that there's a, a real need for community trust, and that's going mm -hmm. to come from, from somebody that is a known person who's, who they have confidence in. Okay, great. Even though I love what, you know, I, I enjoyed meeting the person that we're working with. I'm sorry, I forget her name. Jeannie. But, Jeannie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that... Uh, Ursula and then Kari. Mine was sort of on the question of the um, consultant okay. facilitator for community engagement, and if that is something finance committee, because I was slacking that meeting, <laughs> um, had come to the idea that maybe we only needed a facilitator consultant for the community engagement and designing community engagement, which I feel like designing community engagement falls into like what Greater Schools is doing with us, right? Yeah. Um, I think there's a difference between facilitating the meetings and the discussions. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yes. So like there's the design of our community engagement and how we're getting the information out there and, and back. It. And then having somebody who facilitates mm -hmm. yeah. the conversations. Yeah. Uh, that was the point the I was going to make and you made it much better yeah. than I would have. Oh. But <laughs> yeah. well, I would also say just in terms of the, I, I, I would not suggest we create a new committee. It's just, it's just who wants to do a new committee. Um, and I think the finance committee makes some sense. They deal with money, they deal with data. How did the rest of the finance committee feel about that idea? But we would Since be we would we would be adding one member to the finance committee uh, uh, at least. So you know you can all think about who would want to join the finance committee that is sort of not ready on another committee. Uh, but uh, we don't have to decide that today. Mm -hmm. We're not we haven't warned to, but that's something to keep in mind. And Chris, so, you so had a question. We, what if we created a finance ad hoc committee? Mm -hmm. So that unless unless this is going to be up at every finance committee that uh, meeting, every finance committee meeting that occurs, um, but you'd have a financial finance ad hoc committee and folks who were just going to work on this showed up for the ones the meetings that were that. But if 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 it's going to be every finance committee meeting that you're working on this, then that doesn't make sense. The other thing, Floyd, I want to you clarify something. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think you said that the um, up and through December that. It would just the study committee would just be studying it um, without. I, but I understood that they were going to be presenting options too of can reconfiguration. You would say finance committee would be do, studying the, the, the uh, doing the, the study, but not the, part the reconfiguration. Just the study. And then um, we move into configuration. Well, I think the study committee we, would study the, configurations. But after we do the study, after we do the first part, gathering all the data, right? I think yeah. December uh, would be showing configurations. Okay. So I think and, they're and intertwined. And intertwined. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry for confusion. I was just going to observe that the finance committee is a small committee. Yeah. And I, I would think that we should invite. Yeah. More than one additional member. We lost one member. Yeah. And I think anyone who's able to join should join, particularly if this is added to our scope of It would be awesome to see any of you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm looking right at you. 
Also, I think, I think just based on what you just said, Chris, I, I, I wanted to reiterate, I feel like it's a very, like the, the, the work of the study committee is very value neutral, right? It's, yeah. it's developing what's sort of mathematically feasible. Yeah. It's not saying, you know, what, like it's, it has to be the job of the full board and the community to say what is aligned with our core beliefs and our vision. Well, you can say it's value neutral. You can say it's value neutral. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and that's what but I was... Is it yeah. necessary? I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a... Unless there are non-humans involved in this committee, because <laughs> well, like, we open our... You know, our yeah. Whatever. Our, and maybe our we have to keep the book open. Maybe we have to keep the book open to the possibility that someone brings, you know, an option from left field that mm -hmm. is equally yeah, yeah. feasible. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. And what I was trying to say is that ultimately the finance committee is not like everything else. We're going to be doing the work, but the decision is all of us. You know, the, we just bring recommendations to you, right? We're not going to make a decision on behalf of the board I with that community it. input. And Michaela, I see <laughs> your, I'm not going to say. Um, what, so what is the question that is burning? Um, well, I guess I think maybe it was already answered, but it seems to me that the finance committee already has um, quite a big job in terms of budgeting and everything. So the, the current committee feels that it can also take this on with the addition of a second meeting a month. We already meet twice a month when we do uh, budgeting, and it's just it's very hard to separate this right. two from budgeting. And then the second question is: Are there members of each town on the finance committee? Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we have. But can you guys raise your hand? So, yeah, kind of. We are just missing one from Berlin. So we'll start. No, and Worcester. No, no. And Worcester. And Worcester. Yeah. So we. Yeah, and we talked about that, so we could have so I mean, I think volunteer. It's very. I, just, I feel strongly it's important that at every stage of the process, each town be represented. And I know that the, you can say, you know, all you want, but it's going to be objective, and it's just, you know, laying out the options. But um, you know, it, in reality, we all bring our biases and emotions into things, and. I, Knowing how some of the communities might be affected, I think it's important that from the beginning, each one have representation. Yeah. And yeah, you know, I, I, I think that so we could add two. We could add two people. We could add a Dodi Wooster board member and a and a Berlin uh, board member to mm -hmm. the to the committee. And they, you know, the five, you know, however many we are, would be representing all of the students, right? Mm -hmm. Maggie and then Joshua. And clarifying question: uh, As collective board members, general board members, are we not, are are we not all able to participate in any? Yes. Of, so there, there's your core membership expectation, mm -hmm. but we're we're welcome to be participating in any of these. Correct. Yeah. Not necessarily as voting members of the committee. That was I, not the impression I, I was given when I stumbled into the finance meeting <laughs> the first time. Yeah, it's a little different that when you're doing negotiations, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it's, yeah, so I, I think that it, it would be hard, you know, I'm not trying to contradict you, Jonas. I, I think it's easier if we just have the members doing the, uh, being the ones voting. But I think every, this is yeah, a no, bigger that's, issue, that's, so it's okay. To, to have everybody voting? I know, it's fine. I have yeah. To, I also yeah. think, I wonder I mechanically, the finance committee won't really even necessarily be voting so much on this particular issue. They'll be generating producing, recommendations, rec right? Well, well, I don't even like, know that they'll be recommending. But that's be, true. Yeah, just here, here's uh, here's yeah. all the ones we thought of. Here's yeah. how we studied them. So in some ways, are we going to be examining the data that's brought to us and go, "This is what yeah. we think is missing"? Yes. Yeah. And there would need to be a core group of people who. It feels that. a lot like what we do with equality when Jen brings us reports and we look at them that's and a good say what we liked and yeah. what maybe we don't need to bring to the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. So, and so collaborate that way. So whoever wants to come, it's, mm -hmm. you know, is welcome to be part of that diversity of thought mm -hmm. when we are having the the conversations. What we can do is try to schedule for a time that works for everybody. It's just the finance committee. You know, meets on Tuesdays at eight in the morning, and you know that's just the the reality of it for right mm -hmm. now. Joshua, 
Yeah, I appreciate uh, McKellen's point, mm -hmm. and I think it. I think it could dovetail nicely with a consultant slash slash facilitator that's not a part of the community. I mean, after all, we are part of the community, so we sh we I hope we're trusted to you know bring information and ideas to the community. Um, I'm not saying we shouldn't choose a person as a facilitator if we go that way as a who's already a member of the community, but if we can't get that, I think the fact that if there was representation from all the towns on the committee, that would be important. That could be that could help the process, if that makes sense. Is there a possibility of that second meeting being moved to a time that might be more conducive to yeah, we can schedules like one that's we, we, I would imagine if we you're can talk two about members. It members. Yeah, we would have to mm. look at the schedule too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because so I think that could increase participation for some of us who may not perceive ourselves as having that level of flexibility to participate in an 8 a.m. meeting. Fair. Fair. So, yeah. so there would be three, it sounds like three meetings a month for the Finance Committee? Two meetings a month for finance committee. There's two now. Two now. No, we just we, when we three. start budgeting okay. season, we move into two. Okay. And that's why okay. we're having two. Right so now. you'd start off with when this started. It'd be two, starting yes. with two. Okay. Yeah. It's Tuesdays. You say? Tuesdays. Tuesdays at eight. At eight, and we okay. move, meet remotely. Okay. Yeah. There's I mean, there's also the. We could also sort of suggest that. The, the town members on the, on the finance committee serve as sort of the liaison to the town's whole delegation to the school board. Yeah. And make sure that the other Cowles members, the other Worcester members, the other Middlesex members, and so on are sort are of important. fully up to speed with what's going on so people don't feel out of the loop. That's, That's a great idea. Approach yeah. we can take. I don't need to do yeah. that. I have another question about data collection. Um, Ursula mentioned earlier that she wanted another measure included. And I just want, is there a list of the measures that are being considered? And we, we were just talking, talking about, about this. I, I don't think it was a list so much. Whoops. Okay. Uh, this one. Sounds like a so, really good first so, step. Okay. <laughs> right. So <laughs> there's probably the study yeah. committee would add to what's in the parentheses. What's in the parentheses are just examples. So one that isn't finance related, but um, wondering if we can get is like student climate survey. So I'm seeing a lot of like mm -hmm. financial and cold numbers, but where is the information about student and staff perceptions of their school climates? And we have that, I'm assuming we still have all that data. Like we collect that and survey. School well, we have not had a consistent yeah. climate okay. survey in a while. Okay. That That's what is going to be launched consistently this starting this year. Okay. Individual schools do, but okay. they're not always the same tool. and oh. um, So there is some data. Okay. But historically, looking back, won't be a ton, um, but there is a metric moving forward. That said, climate survey is not the only way to gather student feedback either about their experiences or whatever, the study committee could say, we want to figure out how students are involved in this. Let's talk about metrics. So mm -hmm. this is just meant to say, these, these are a list of things that other folks have studied. It's a good starting point. The study committee would want to be adding to that list for sure. I didn't realize there was a, a universal tool being used across the district. There will be mm -hmm. now. There yeah. will be starting this year. Okay. Yeah, we, we had been talking about doing that parallel to our superintendent evaluation. So last year we said we couldn't develop it last year. They've been working on the questions and stuff yep. so to, they can launch it this year and use it in parallel to help us. Okay. I thought there was something associated with PBIS that perhaps was being used at the school level. Individual schools, so some do. Okay. And in fact, the PBIS survey was part of, it's um, uh, uh, one of the spring cult reports. There's a summary of the design team that was working on the climate survey. Okay. Um, and PBS was one of the surveys that they looked at to create the internal one. Okay. Yeah. So it's custom to the district. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Okay. So everybody feeling comfortable with the discussion as we are right now and it's an evolving plan, right? Okay. Yeah. So we're agreeing that the finance committee our next meeting will appoint two other members to the finance uh, to the finance committee. Okay. 
it, there's no need for action right now. It's just like, you know, we would trust each other and continue this conversation and evolve the plan as needed. It, moving into 6.2, I would love a motion to affirm the board work plan and we can still have discussion. I move to affirm the 2023-24 board work plan. Thank you, Jonas. Second. Jonas and Chris, second. Any questions? We just infused what we talked about, and Megan infused what we talked about at our retreat. Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? So, uh, do we want to just talk about September 6th? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying before without showing the calendar that in September 6th, we, you know, we don't, because we won't be ready for a community engage, you know, for a community, we're leaving it sort of flexible right now because we are also, maybe that would be a great day for having focus groups. We don't know that yet. So instead of filling that, that slot, we're leaving it flexible. So we, your calendars are still marked with possible. It work, but there might not be anything on September on the September sixth. Well, we probably want to decide that tonight. I think yeah. we 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 wanted to illustrate for the board that it doesn't appear that you have action or things for September sixth. Um, so it's worth asking if you need a meeting on September sixth. That's really the question. It opens up a date for the strategic planning steering committee to use for its work. Um, but we should probably be really clear and take it off the work plan just for lack, just so we're not yeah. confusing the thing. Yeah, so we, did, we didn't put anything in there. What I don't want the board members to do is to like just like, completely clear your calendar because the strategic planning committee went full, you know, mm -hmm. full participation of you guys. So we're going to have focus groups. It doesn't mean that you guys are going to be there facil facilitate, but you might be facilitating something or if you're available to at least right now, this is being a, the strategic planning is already, like we said, in Facebook and Front Porch Forum. If you could send it to your friends and to your uh, email lists, that would be helpful. But uh, yes, Megan, you're right. Let's take it out of, you know, okay. take this it out of not affect the end. It, and that was here. ed quality it would still, still meet it's mm -hmm. right on the I side yeah yeah no that's a good question <laughs> yeah so i'm just gonna say no meeting is the thought to use that for a community engagement on september 6th not an event okay. so the strategic planning steering committee work has been on populate what are the different focus groups they want who needs to sit on them they're now working on a who are we inviting okay. it's a placeholder date that if they're going to hold a focus group in the evening with a group or two this may end up being an option the steering committee also depending on who the groups are evening might be a great time or it's a terrible time mm -hmm. so it's i think it's more just conceptually See. holding the date um as opposed to like we're holding an event. I yeah, don't think the steering not, committee yes, intends yes. to hold an event, partially because in this phase, that's not the best way to gather mm -hmm. the input. I, yeah, it would be I, small I groups. I asked because September 6th is very early in the beginning of the school year, which Correct. Yeah. I think is incredibly overwhelming for the majority of at least elementary age families um, and would not just doesn't seem like that would be conducive to yeah. um, involvement. Okay. So all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? The motion carries. Okay. School board vacancies removed. Uh, district clerk vacancy. We still continue to to look for a district clerk if you guys could you know ask your friends we asked everybody in some other districts man had shared that it's a retired board member sometimes that can mm. assume that that position we not to worry we've been following every step of the duties of a clerk and we notified our you know our select boards of the meeting today we've let the clerks know when we had the vacancy yeah, but as we get closer to, you know, election in March or in January, it would be really nice to have a district clerk. Have we asked the 
other town clerks in the district, and they've all explicitly declined. We have uh, begged the other. <laughs> yeah, asked is a loose word. <laughs> in multiple occasions, <laughs> in different ways. I would just add that one of the reasons to highlight that it's been done by former board members is it is not as complicated as being a town clerk right yeah. yes there's learning involved but rosie's been wonderful she is willing to train and so if you do know someone who's nah, i'm not sure i want to join the board but i want to be involved um yeah there's a there's a little bit of a lift certainly around election time but um it is a learnable job it's our it's a job we can teach you about. <laughs> Chris, you're volunteering. No, just kidding. <laughs> remind us, does it pay? Yes, it has it's a stipend. A, it's, pretty fun. Small. it's pretty small, but we can yeah. we could someone... change it. We could, you know, we, you know, yes. And, and if someone's interested, who do they contact? Floor. Yeah. Floor. Yeah. And floor. Yeah. Floor. Yes. yeah. And we have. It's 500. 500. The board, you... they did, when you yeah. upped the board stipends, you didn't at the time up. Increase that one. It doesn't mean you can't, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we should consider yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What would we need to have? What would we need to do in order to increase that? Put it on the agenda. Take a vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then it has so to go bring it to the steering the committee, and the steering committee will right? put it in the agenda. So it goes on the ballot in March. Yeah. It yeah. Be until yeah. Yeah. It exactly. doesn't. Yeah. And, and so far, one. it doesn't seem to be the reason people don't want to do it. It was, it was more about the, the logistic and adding work. A lot of our clerks right now don't have assistants, and there's been a lot of uh, assistant clerks, right? And some, some do, and some been through higher. You know, there's been a lot. So, but if you know of anybody, please, you know, send it our way. Uh, now let's move into a. Pointing a proxy for the Visbit annual meeting. I'm looking for a motion. Okay, okay. Oops. Uh, oh, it's my sorry. Right. sorry. Sorry, sorry. Is this for Visbit? Okay, so I'll, I think traditionally that's the superintendent, mm -hmm. so I'll make a motion that we appoint Megan to be our proxy for Visbit. Second. Moved by Kari and second by Chris. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 The motion. Any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Okay, moving right into our consent agenda. Looking for a motion to approve our minutes. We move to approve the minutes of June 21st. Thank you, Jonas. A second? Second. Thank you, Ursula. Any discussion? Amendments? They look good. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Seeing none, the motion carries. Thank you. The board orders, uh, which I forgot to pass them around. Linda Johnson Memorial. Uh, I know, Linda is not here, but uh, I'm going to give it to Carrie. I'm going to pass it to a pen. And then a pen. Can we make the motion? Yes, that's why I'm giving it to you. <laughs> Just because my arm could reach that way. <laughs> um, and there's two here? Is that one? Yeah. Lisa, are you ready for the board order yes. number? So I will make a motion to approve the July board order for a total of $1,147,436.29. Okay, oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll walk over and show you the numbers in just a moment. One million one hundred forty-seven thousand four hundred thirty-six dollars and twenty-nine cents. Okay. Thank you, Kari. Uh, second. Second. Thank you, Ursula. Any discussion or questions? You've got them in the email. The folder is going to go around. Please make sure to sign. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. And I would like yeah. to make a motion to uh, approve the June orders for a total of $10 million, no, $10,990,392.57. $10, Second. Thank you, Kari. Thank you, Chris. Any questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. 
and I'll set. I'm just going to give them a minute, and then we'll move into personnel. Is Mindy going to make a, you know, a cameo appearance? <laughs> the read all these things so much. I had an open up. Ursula is going to take There's them on, unless you want to take no. them on. You have them right there. Actually, oh, you can do it. And you know, one of them fought in my hometown. Okay. But not when I lived there. Okay. Because he uh, would have been retired then. Uh, <laughs> Okay. All set. So let's let's move into approved new teachers in Good. Uh, Chris. Uh, there's questions apparently. Yeah, but let's just no, do no, 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 no Okay, well uh, Chris move. is willing to take this move. on, so I move that we approve the following new hires. Kirby Wisman, special educator at Berlin, Herbert Perez, um, social studies student uh, social studies teacher at U32, middle school social studies teacher. Daniel Velez, uh, literacy interventionist at Berlin. Catherine McCauley Flippin, educational support at Berlin. Ruth Friesenden, uh, school counselor at Catalyst. Elizabeth Bevins, instructional interventionist slash kindergarten at East Montpelier Elementary School. Samantha Mishkit, science teacher at U32. Elizabeth Semler, work-based learning coordinator at U32. Jennifer Pelletier, uh, school counselor at U32. And Carla Erbeline, at uh, an intensive needs special educator at East Montpelier Elementary School. Great, thank you, Chris. A second? Second. Thank you, Daniel. Any, any questions? Uh, shout out to Jen Pelletier, the former Vermont Arts Councilwoman. Right. And uh, just congratulations to the staff. If you read the, you know, the highlights from finance, there's been a lot of work that Carla and Central Office have been doing in order to have as many hires. So a shout out to all the Central Office staff for, you know, the hard work through the summer. They've been putting a lot of extra hours to make this possible. So. Thank you, and it's exciting to see the labor coming back to, you know, mm -hmm. like being able to have this many hires. I don't think we had this many hires in our first meeting last year, so it is exciting. So uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Any none? The motion carries. We don't have any retirements, but rehires. Who's going to take this? I move that we um, approve the rehire of Mary Ellen Monday, school-wide student support at Rumley School. Thank you. Okay. Hey, I'm going to give it to Ursula, I think. Right. So Ursula, second it. All those in favor, please. Any questions? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. Resignations. And uh, move that we um, sadly accept the resignations of Lindsay Wright, uh, middle school social studies teacher at U32, uh, Michael Abadi, a special educator teacher at U32, Tess Nepp, a science teacher at U32, and Shannon McKinnon, special educator, East Montpelier Elementary School. Second. Second. Thank you, Michaela. Mm -hmm. Any questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. And that's it for that part of the agenda. Can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, Would it be possible to speak briefly to the qualifications for provisional licensure? Um, in general? Yeah, because yep. may not be. Yep. So um, a provisional teaching license is a teaching license. So if you have one, you are fully licensed to teach. It's not, an, um, it's not considered anything other than a full license. It is a process that the superintendent applies for on behalf of an employee. So when we hire someone with 
Um, you know, this is a period of time where we hire people who are coming to education from different pathways. And so the um, licensing department of the Agency of Ed accepts the application that we submit on the person's behalf. Um, the tenets of it, depending on the license, there's different requirements for what the person has to meet, but the um, the biggest thing to remember is the person has to make a plan to achieve the um, what's needed for the license, whether that's coursework or internship or whatever, within two years. And so a provisional license is good for two years. Mm -hmm. If they meet their requirement, it moves into a level one teaching license. Um, the it is the superintendent's license that those are um, work under, essentially. So it's my job to make sure that they're working toward their license and that we're supporting them. They receive a mentor, just like our others. And for special educators who have a provisional license, because the state two years ago, a year ago, because of the extreme shortage in special education, they've actually modified the requirements for a provisional in special education, and therefore they've increased the support requirements that we have to provide. There's some state level oversight to the mentoring and things like that. So it's our job to make sure that that is all happening for our provisionally licensed folks. It's a process we're used to. We just have many more of them at the same time than we have in the past, as does the rest of the state. Yeah. Do you passing it? Okay. So that leads us right into a, an update in vacancies. Mm -hmm. um, we are in better shape than we were in last year. I know we just had a financial report that talks about being chronically understaffed, and that is still true. We are still, the positions we are most in need of continue to be paraprofessionals and custodians, and we have two special educator vacancies currently, one at one of our elementary schools and one at the high school. Um, we continue to work to fill those positions. Um, we will probably be coming to you with an update about um, move, how we are looking to fill those two vacant positions, probably at the September board meeting. Um, but the good news is it's better than it's been. Um, it is still really difficult to find special educators. I would just add, though, we've had great summer applicants. Um, we've had people who move, move into the system, miraculously found housing, I'm not sure how, um, and so that's exciting. We've had really interesting people come in um, excited to get into education, and um, so there's a lot to be happy about, and it's really difficult. Our support staff vacancies are really hard still. All right, thank you. Thank you, Megan. So with that, it, we can look at our future agenda items. We usually put our work plan uh, up. Oh, I can do it again. Do you yep. mind? <laughs> nope, sorry, I just took it down. That's just our practice for our new board members. So we always, you will have access to this work plan and you can get to see at the end of, help us organize and then the steering committee meets in between our, you know, right two Wednesdays before the board meeting and just to work on the agenda. Yep. So Based this is our next plan. meeting. Yeah. So, yeah. So a highlight, so on the 20th, one of the highlights will be, um, as part of the strategic planning process, you are one of the focus groups. So um, Jeannie Phillips will come to the board to get your input on the draft vision as an entity. So um, that will be the kind of presentation topic um, you'll have uh, sort of the normal September actions. Um, one of the things you will look at is the budget development timeline um, draft to take your first look at that. Um, actually, you will also approve that timeline. <laughs> yeah. I should read all the way over. Yeah. Yes. And we already approved the proxy for VSBED, but we will be appointing a member, a voting member for the for resolutions VSBA. for VSBA at yeah. our September meeting. Will we be reading any of the resolutions? At that point, I can't we, remember when they. We would. Uh, uh, there's a webinar uh, on the seventh, on September seventh at noon. If you guys want to attend, and then we can talk about them at our September twentieth. And depending on our workload, we can take more time on that. But uh, the webinar will be recorded too, so if you can be there at noon, just sign up. You get all the emails from the VSBA. Sign up to be part of the webinar, and then you will get the. The, the information to you. We 
Yeah, they'll send you a link and then any support documents yeah. from the webinar if you and sign up and end up not being able to attend. Yeah, I'm um, happy to. Send that to us? It's, it already went out, and the regional meetings is September 14. For so they can, central they do their region. weekly or whatever yeah. newsletter that they send out. The um, there was a, for the resolutions thing. Was on yeah, there. there was up an update just this week. Okay. And I think that leads us to our. Uh, Executive sessions. So after the executive sessions, so we yeah yeah yes. Questions. yes. Um, so <clears throat> I read in the newspaper that um, there's com or, or it was mentioned about potential consolidation ah. with Montpelier. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. so I was Indeed. just asking if there's been any contact, any discussion, any whatever uh, with uh, Montpelier. Oh, I can tell you that um, my counterpart in Montpelier forwarded me the front porch forum thread so that I'm aware of the The Times chatter. Argus, too. Well, then I read the Titans Argus, Argus. yes. Yeah. I read the yeah. thread first. Um, I mean, my, my thought about that is we are studying configuration options. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you could study is the concept of a broader consolidation mm -hmm. um, you would not obviously what you'd really be studying for that option is how to start that study because that is not a small nope. lift um, and I mean yeah I, yeah and I've you know I've, I've heard from a couple of people about informally no, nothing nothing formal yet but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they you know reach out to us and I think the main thing to consider uh, for us would be like how do we like Megan said how do we weave that into our strategic planning and our configuration planning so we have a meaningful conversation without trying to bring together uh, you know two communities at the same time that we're doing that we're doing this so you know there's more to come in uh, I think we it, that would be something that uh, when when we see it coming our way we'll add it to well, our it, agenda do we want to reach out um, and see if that's even feasible because it would seem that if if it is and there's any interest in that that we'd want to do it before we do the reconfiguration because that would certainly have an impact, I assume, mm. on how we reconfigure. Yeah, we definitely, as a finance committee, we can we can look we can look at that and integrate it into our one you know one of the options and how that informs mm -hmm. our 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 yeah, thinking. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But any, it, because we're going to go into an executive session, and uh, it, just from one of them, we would probably have uh, some action. I also don't want to keep everybody here. We usually typically have a public comments at the end of the meeting. So if there's anybody in the public that would like to have a public comment uh, right now, or from administrators or have any reflection on the meeting, please, you're welcome. Good. Didn't want to ask me about that uh, high school thing there, Chris. <laughs> high school. <laughs> How's your vacation? <laughs> okay. Any reflections for board members? Since we, I'm going to let the you know Orca and everybody go because I don't think we would. I'm thinking I dropped up a summary for that, front porch forum to share it with the steering committee and get back in that rhythm. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Kari. Any any other reflections from from board members? It's exciting we have a full board. It's it is. super ex <laughs> super <laughs> exciting true. super exciting that is, we yeah. have a, we it's have staff this year this week. Right? Yes, yeah. we welcome new, new staff teachers staff back on teachers. Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kids are coming yeah. next Wednesday. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and it's you know, and it's and it's also I just I forgot to mention at the beginning, but just thinking about you know our you know our surrounding towns, both Barry and Montpelier, have been going through a lot of recovery, mm -hmm. and we have you know managed putting resources, and you know just we keep thinking of them. Uh, Montpelier is opening; they have hot water, and mm -hmm. they have what what they need. So, and we'll be hosting some of their sports teams. So it's uh, it's been great to see the community come together. So. So with that, it, I'm going to call for a bunch of executive session to for a change of residency to include. We'll wait for that while we're waiting for that call. 
are we all done with that call? And, and I just wanted to share, this is a point of privilege, I don't usually take that, but if you haven't checked out the elections in Guatemala, you should Big look. Deal. It's a, I could start crying right now, it's a huge deal. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, just think about how lucky we are mm -hmm. here. It's, it's really, you know, it's, I can't, you know, me as in Guatemala right now, and I just said, you know, you're living a historic moment for, that we, most of us take for granted, it's, it's really, so check it out. <laughs> so with that, a motion to go in executive session. I move to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing student enrollment exceptions to include Megan Roy and... I think that's it. That's it. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Jonas, and thank you, well, Chris. And then we're going to go to the room next door because we don't have anybody. Thank you both for staying through. And yeah.